Can you believe this was a first time YouTuber event and it didn't get shut down by the fire marshal? That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda watching Small Entertainment, and today we are talking about Open Sauce, a science slash makers convention hosted by YouTuber William Osman. So I actually found out about this back in March from my creator friends, Evan and Caitlin. They were invited to be featured creators. Apparently people from the event were asking them any creators that they should invite as like press media, and they thought of me, which was very nice of them. So they told me that back in March. I said, absolutely, I would love that, great. And then I heard nothing from Open Sauce. So you know me, I bought a ticket, May 3rd to be exact, and I bought the premium pass for $364.15. Now premium got you a couple of different things, including I think the goodie bag, an hour early access, and then the creator talks, okay? However, a little over two weeks ago, back in June, William messaged me on Twitter and said, hey, Evan and Caitlin said you were interested in coming and told me that they could offer a guest badge and a hotel wristband if that was something I was interested in. I said I had actually already ended up buying a premium wristband or to pass back in May, but uh, I would still love a wristband for the hotel if that's possible. He said, great, give me your name and email, sent it over. And then is that the one that you actually used to buy the pass with? Uh, we'll refund you, save some money. And then I have no idea if it actually got refunded. I never got a confirmation or anything. I'll have to check my credit card statement to see if it got refunded. I don't know. He said I could pick up my badge the 13th or the 14th at the hotel for the creators. And I could also go to like the little Friday event that they were having for creators. However, I said I could not go. And if I could pick up my badge and all that on Saturday the 15th because I was actually going to have to fly in from Zurich that day as well And he said yeah, that's totally fine. So that's what I ended up doing I was in Zurich So I missed the Friday night creator stuff and I got into the actual event at about 1 p.m On Saturday, but halt I need to pay for this trip somehow So let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video after a while They have sent me even more bras to show off for you my lovely boob havers and People who know boob havers. We're inclusive on this channel. Harper Wild believes that style and comfort should go hand in hand, and they have affordable bra and underwear options for every occasion. And I know you're thinking, they did send me this wonderful sports bra that just looks so good on camera. Oh my God. So this is the Move Racerback sports bra, and I'm wearing the color Skyrider in a size small. Next up, we have the base strapless bra, and this is in the color beige, and this is in my normal cup size 34B. For strapless bras, I often find that they're either too tight or too loose. The fact that this fully covers my entire cup is great. Then we have the base t-shirt bra in the color black and again in a 34B and this is just super comfy, super everyday, it's great. Go to harperwild.com and use code SWELL to get 15% off or click the link in the description box. Treat yourself and your tatas and thank you to Harper Wild for sponsoring this video. I was able to do the full day Sunday, but I anything that happened right at opening for the start of the event, I did not was not there to witness. So what I did hear was that the line was pretty long and someone said 30 minute wait time. Honestly, 30 minutes is nothing. I know if this is like your first time going to an event, 30 minutes sucks, but also that's really nothing in the grand scheme of these events. Even non YouTube events, I waited in line for like an hour, three hours, four sometimes. Three hours is insane. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't make it good, but 30 minutes is literally on the lowest of low ends. So that's pretty impressive. So Open Sauce was at Pier 35 in Fisherman's Wharf here in San Francisco. So around the time that William actually messaged me, he posted a video to YouTube titled, I made a baby literally two weeks ago, and it's currently got 877,000 views. Now in this video, he's talking about open sauce, but he's also talking about how uh, him and his wife had a baby. But in this video, he goes into depth about open sauce for, and a variety of different things that are going to be at open sauce, as well as he made a 3D model to show off open sauce itself. It's a little funny because he says that they are gonna be using a battleship for open sauce. And then he says that the accountant said that they will be making less money than they are spending on open sauce. And I could have told you that when you said that you were renting a battleship. <laughs> now that being said, and I wanna make this abundantly clear because I think everyone expects to make a ton of money from social media events. And maybe I should just make a crash course video for these things because no one's consulting me and people keep asking for free consulting. So I might as well make a video so that I actually make some money off of it, okay? Because I'm just gonna make an all-in-one Swell Entertainment's crash course for event planning, okay, for social media events, for conventions, all of that. You will lose money the first year. You should lose money. You don't do an event the first year to get money. The downfall of TanaCon was that they were expecting to make money 
and that it was just only going to be a cash cow thing. That was one of the main downfalls of TanaCon. And so Tana never put any of her own money into it because she expected to only make money from it. And that's one of the many reasons of why TanaCon was disastrous, okay? I didn't, wasn't able to talk to William at all this weekend, but I did talk to Ian and a few other people from the team. And it did seem like they, yes, knew they were going to lose a lot of money. But they also figured that like this is just the first year that they're going to be losing money. And I also think that this is going to work out long term. But losing money for a first year of an event is the norm. The same way that when you open a restaurant, you plan to lose money for six months, if not longer, ideally longer. I personally think you shouldn't start a restaurant unless you're planning to lose money for the first 12 months, but that's just me. If this event had made a ton of money, it would have been an outlier. Them losing money the first year of the event is pretty standard. I don't think that's out of line to say because this is a new proof of concept. There's a lot happening here. We'll talk more about some of the sponsorship issues and things like that that I heard about. So uh, 1 p.m., I was exhausted, but I went, checked into my hotel here, still here currently, and went straight over to the hotel to pick up my badge. And then I went straight over. Where's my badge? Hold on. So here is the open sauce badge. It says guests open sauce and it's got the robot on it, made by JLCPCB. And I originally went through the side entrance, which is where they drop you off with the car, because I took the shuttle from the hotel over to Open Sauce. Um, here's the map <laughs> of Open Sauce. So Pier 35 is also massive. So they ended up, I think only half of the actual pier space, the building, was it used for this, honestly? I think you could have extended that a bit more. As far as crowding goes, I did get a total for the uh, amount of people that went. It was 5,000 tickets total. So about 5,000 people per day, okay? Probably about 450 per day. 4,500, you get my point. I'm assuming, I'm tired. I'm jet lagged, sorry. And I think that was a good number. And I told Ian that it was a good number because I was talking to, we were talking with a couple of people at the after party Saturday night. Someone else, a friend of mine was like, yeah, 5,000 just seems like a low number. And I said, well, 5,000 is what got TanaCon in trouble. And Ian was like, we were literally just trying not to be TanaCon. And I said, great. <laughs> I hate being late to events. Like, I just, I, I can't, I don't like it. It's like so much has happened already. It's packed today. And I don't know where anything is. And I usually know by now. So I'm like, prepare for the schedule, but this is weird. There's so much to look at and I don't have time. <laughs> So inside we have the safety zone, which is basically, how do I describe the safety zone? This is where the egg drop contraption was. This is where the robot tug of war was. This is where the giant mech also was. There was a lot happening here. As someone who is not a science creator, I just like, I'm nosy, I'm curious. I like learning about things, the, et cetera. This was very cool. The amount of stuff here that was just really cool. Everyone I spoke to was very excited to talk about their creations, what they've made, things they're working on, all of that. It was very fun and exciting. But the safety zone, there was a lot happening there. They ended up also having the little car races, like the little derby that they had where you could bring your own souped up little car, but there were certain specifications, which if they do that next year, I kind of think that I would do another road trip because picture me, my car, okay, and then strapped on top of it is a Barbie car that I've souped up like a little hat driving to San Francisco. I think that would be great content for me. Do I have the capabilities or the knowledge to do this? No, but I try things so you don't have to and I will figure it out. And then uh, the whole other further area, there was more like, uh, that's where the shrimp fried rice was, the giant drone that can carry a person. And then outside over here, as you can see, is the SS Jeremiah O'Brien Liberty ship. So we are literally on a boat. Inside the pier is where open sauce is. This is the the food truck situation. So there's a couple of different spots for food. This is the one part that I think that is cool in theory and then in practice, it's not great. But you know, you figure it out, you learn, okay? And this is something that it's cool, okay? It is cool. But I also can understand the complaint. So the complaint that I heard with this is that if you wanted food at this event, aside from the robot that was cooking fries and the shrimp fried rice, um, that was obviously like a little sample if that, you had to go up the stairs to get onto the SS Jeremiah to get food. There was food tickets. So it was $22 for one food ticket, $3 for a drink, $7 for dessert. There was tacos and burgers, I believe, up on the 
proof. I ended up never actually getting food because the first day when my friends were eating, uh, Robbie and Tori, they got food and my appetite was just all over the place because of my jet lag. I was on a whole different time zone at this point in time. So I really wasn't hungry. And then it wasn't until three hours later ish. No closer to like four when I was like, okay, now I'm hungry. And I went to go get uh, a, a ticket uh, and they were gone because the food was out. So I got ice cream, but to get onto the ship, you had to go up two ramps basically we'll go up one and then come down another and as someone who has no mobility issues i will say these ramps were rickety as hell i can't imagine what it would be like if i had a cane or a walker or something like that and i also personally did see someone's service dog i don't know what the exact uh, situation was but the service dog had a meltdown on the stairs because of how rickety it was i assume because it couldn't properly alert it's human or what have you and so they ended up having to do a tr bring the dog back down the stairs basically and so that's just kind of something where it's super cool in theory but there should be at least an option on the ground level okay that's just something that should be the case the boat's super cool and people were still being able to tour the boat uh the engine room was a whole thing as well and also you could go and like sit in the gunner seats and like move the things the, the ship was cool it was cool but you know food options there should also be one on the ground. And then the second day I did buy a ticket for food and then I walked around and was like, this line is bad. And so I ended up just needed protein on day two and I just went and got street tacos. We all got street tacos for lunch outside of the convention. And honestly, best decision I made. No offense to your tacos. I'm sure they were great. But um, they were, it was $13 for three tacos and a soda. All conventions have shitty food prices. That's just how it is. But uh, you could beat those stereotypes. I'm just saying. Off to the side through the walkway, they had um, a bunch of like car-based things or motor-based things. So there was a little mini car thing. So we walked through security only like once or twice. And that was really only on the second day, really, because I had a guest badge. So I was able to go through a side entrance. Uh, Robbie and Tori both had premium badges. So we still had to go through the front for them. So you would go through, you would check your bag, you'd walk through the little metal detector, the walkthrough one, and then they would scan you. And I thought it was odd that they kept scanning us, despite none of us setting off the walkthrough sensor and then we found out as they were tearing them down like yeah these things never worked they never got the things to work I'm just saying they shouldn't be for appearances your security metal detector should should metal detect and I get it you've got a lot more dangerous stuff inside open sauce than I could potentially ever bring into open sauce but still I just think that something should be doing that if you guys paid for that you should ask for a refund if they haven't already refunded you because that's ridiculous if that's the case and then off past the whole arc attack section and all of this stuff they had creator discussions now creator discussions it's funny because i talked to ian and ian said that he had been to every single vidcon except for the first one apparently and one of the things that actually used to be very cool about i believe the last time this happened was 2019 vidcon because obviously 2020 and 2021 didn't happen and then 2022 i don't believe this was a thing at uh, the creator lounge for the creator floor for VidCon, the creator badge. But they used to have creator discussions at VidCon where basically one big creator, featured creator, would do like a 45 minute talk with like 12, 15 different people with a creator badge and you would have to apply for this. I never actually got one of these, but people used to love them because you could talk with a creator basically with a smaller group and get your questions answered no problem. And uh, my friend Caitlin, who was a featured creator this year, um, did one of these talks and she was like, oh yeah, it was great. It was fun. And she was explaining it to me and I was like, oh yeah, that's like a VidCon thing. That's crazy. Because VidCon stopped doing that. And it's a very fun thing for fans as well as creators because it's a smaller group. It's more intimate. It's more controlled. You get your questions answered. And I just think it's great. And I don't know why VidCon got rid of that. Camera, I'm filming you. When a robot has more of a talent than me. Then they had the Creator Museum. Now the complaints I did hear about the Creator Museum was from the actual few creators themselves. Uh, they're worried about the security situation. Um, a lot of the security uh, for the event, aside from actual security guards walking around, were signs made by William that said, don't touch, which funny and very on brand. And there was a lot of MS Paint signs and things like that all over the place that said like, sponsors next year, your brand here. They let me print anything, things like that. Very fun. But as far as like creators and creation and things like that, a little more security might be nice. Um, and everyone didn't seem to really have name tags for their things. So like Evan and Caitlin had their stickers, so they just stuck one on there for their stuff. Um, a few people made little signs. 
but I think there's a way to kind of do this. Something as simple as having like little, you know, desk placards in like old timey movies, old timey movies, they have these now, but like CEO, things like that. I don't know, get a bunch of those blank and then get label makers and then make one for each person that has one. I think that's easy. Also, um, a way to do this in a way that's safe is get one of those Ikea, those big organizers, like the things that go inside um, your closet. Those are pretty cheap uh, or you can make one, but you do that. Okay. So you have a big setup with that and you can personalize it to make it cool or whatever. You just get a big piece of plexiglass or something and screw that into the front part. And then that way creators can go behind it and get their stuff, put their stuff in, tweak it. But then it's a little harder for anyone to get through it. And it's not just like one little divider and then a sign that says don't touch. I think that's a really easy fix um, and something that can just be cool and also bigger, a little higher up. And then you guys having nameplates potentially available for people that you can personalize day of. So that way, if you even do have last minute additions, that's something you can deal with and add on. It's kind of fun. BattleBots had their own thing as well. So there was a bunch of different BattleBots like competitors. Is that the word you use? And I was trying to tell the BattleBots guys, I was like, you know, you guys are like right by the orb. You should pitch to get yourselves projected on the orb for like one of the battles. That'd be super cool. Just a bunch of uh, creators had booths as well, as well as fun things set up. So there was just a lot happening constantly. I'm sure I just have random footage of just random things. Lots of random robots. That was fun. Can I pet your dog? <laughs> 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 and then there was the main stage. Now, the main stage, I was told there was about 500 seats set up for the main stage. Not enough, but also spaced requirements. I get it. Honestly, I think you probably should have flipped the stage around. Uh, so instead of having it facing internally, uh, you should have had it facing towards the rest of the expo hall. I think that one would have helped sound just slightly. I know that sounds counterintuitive, having it pointed towards an outdoor space versus bouncing against a wall, because maybe that makes sense to some people. Oh, it makes sense to the, um, the walls. However, with the way that this building is designed, I'm not shocked that it, there was a lot of hearing issues for these uh, speakers and the stage. So the guest pass actually got me into the creator lounge, which was great the first day because I was able to get pizza when there was no more food because they had pizza in the creator lounge. But also there was a balcony that we could actually go and watch everything from, which was kind of nice. And so I was talking to a couple of creators up there while we were up there because Adam Savage talked as well. And so I really wanted to hear him talk. And I was like, okay, well, I know that's gonna be packed. So I'll be up on the balcony. And sure enough, all these creators were up on the balcony for that one. I was like having issues hearing and I'm thinking like, oh, okay, it's because the speakers are doing, you know, the usual like like shape where they're like kind of at a angle that's kind of pointed down towards the actual crowd and I'm thinking that's why I was having issues hearing and they're like no unless you're like right in the first row it's really hard to hear so I think it's just the location. And again, this is a massive space, even with the big black curtains blocking off the other half of the pier 35 area. I don't think it helped much. Um I think that honestly honestly I think if you had just faced it towards the expo hall, I think the rest of the space, I think it would have actually been a better audio situation. I don't know if maybe you tested that and that's why you were like, no, we're going to flip it this way. See if that helps at all. But I just think audio was a massive issue. I was told that next year's open sauce would not be at the same location because I was told that they were fought on everything from this location, as well as the city of San Francisco fought them on everything, which led to, again, them losing an obscene amount of money for this event. I don't know if you guys want to still have it in San Francisco. I understand moving it. The ship is cool. You can get cooler things. Okay. I literally just went to a rave on a battleship look there. I don't know. Something that I did talk to them about um, and I heard quite a few creators apparently had asked about was about how they didn't actually have like there wasn't a whole lot of things to buy here. Okay. Pretty much everyone was giving away stuff for free to the point that a lot of the exhibitors also said, yeah, I thought I was going to stand out by giving this away for free, but apparently everyone's giving away free stuff. There wasn't a ton of stuff to buy. That was an actual merch for the convention, cat warehouse merch, the battle bots merch, things like that for the NHRL people. And I do think that's a mistake for a variety of different reasons. Mainly you have a group here that was so excited 
to meet these creators and support these creators because a lot of them are makers themselves and a lot of them see the value in these things that are being made. So I think that is a group that can be very symbiotic as far as the buying of things that their favorite creators have made as well as just supporting new makers whether they are creators or not. I think that's something that's very intuitive for this event. I also think that groups like this would also very much benefit from artist alleys because again you can have kind of fun little things here and there. I think this is a group as well that was very much willing to spend money for art and things that are made and handmade and handmade art and things like that. I was told basically that the reason that they didn't do that was because what they would have had to charge to have people basically do an art alley or a little maker's fair like that would have been too much money that they didn't think it was fair so they decided against it. It's my understanding that the exhibitors did not have to pay. I don't think. No one said they had to pay. Someone said they had to apply to get chosen. And yeah, I think that's fine. I think if you're not actually selling anything, you shouldn't have to pay. But if you are selling things, you should pay something. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask people to pay something. But I understand you want to keep the cost low because it's harder to... Uh, get people one to agree to come if they're paying a certain amount now i think it'll be easier because you can guarantee a certain number of people that'll be there um i don't know how much larger you could go for the future i probably wouldn't do more than seven thousand, depending on the location because i think five thousand was not too crowded actually there were certain areas yes obviously the main stage got pretty crowded but overall even when it was like peak hours when i got there like there was a lot to look at but i wasn't overwhelmed by the amount of people that was there i do think that they needed to be a little bit more done for like the unofficial meet and greet lines that ended up happening. Evan and Caitlin did end up getting stopped, I was told, for three hours for an unofficial meet and greet photo line that was right in front of the creator space. Something like that just kind of seems like a you need kind of an area that is a little more meet and greety. Just something that's like a backup space as well. Just be like, hey guys, for safety reasons, we got to move you over here. It's not like OG VidCon days where it's like, we're going to ban these creators for creating a hazard, you know? But like there there should be something where it's like, hey guys, this line is a little unsafe. You're blocking this booth. You're doing this. Let's move you over here type of thing, okay? So you can still talk with these creators as well. But then also you get these creators like, hey, do you guys need a break? Do you need the bathroom? Do you need water? Are you good? You know, that type of thing. I just think that's a smart move to have a space that's available available for that that may not necessarily be like a meet and greet space you know but something like that I think is nice one overall merch spot I don't know if creators want to sell their merch I always think that's a good idea that I don't think a lot of cre uh, events have been able to pull off well but I, I'm sure a lot of these creators have their own merch or again their own spots so if, if you have an artist alley you can kind of tuck creator merch in there um you could have like a creator merch aisle maybe or a section that's just like the different feature creators merches um and then they can have someone that can like sit there and sell the merch so that the creators aren't there but then you can do fun little pop-ups like oh and this feature creator will be at their merch stand at this time or it's like a surprise i don't know something like that that's fun marketing <laughs> as you guys know i review events you guys request me to go to events a lot of you are requesting me to go to open sauce but what i also got for this event which i never hear was so many of you messaged me or emailed me and I didn't reply because I didn't know what to say at this point because it's one thing for me to agree to go to something that may or may not happen. It's another thing for me to tell you that it's probably going to happen when I don't know for certain. So that's why I didn't reply to some of you. But basically, you guys emailed me to say, hey, I don't know if you've heard about open sauce. I really wanna go, I wanna buy a ticket, but there's no promotion for it and I'm worried it's a scam or it's not gonna happen. Now, I know this is a first year event, but I don't know if I need to explain this to you. That's bad. <laughs> you really don't want that happening. I don't know exactly what marketing you guys did because obviously I heard about this from Evan and Caitlin. And then I saw William's video, William messaged me, all of that. And obviously I heard about it as well from you guys recommending it to me. So I don't know exactly what marketing you did, but I didn't see much, if any. That's a mistake. And I don't know why this keeps happening. The explanation that I heard, again, like from Creator Clash, is that people don't want to promote an event when they don't know if it's actually going to happen. But obviously, if you don't promote an event, you guarantee it not happening. You'd rather cancel an event last minute than have to cancel it one day in, okay? Because not enough people came and then vendors are pissed. You're not selling enough food, things like that. Let's say Playlist Live did, which it's never been guaranteed from what I can tell of whether or not it was low ticket sales, but that's my assumption was that low ticket sales. But also I had heard nothing about Playlist Live at all leading up to the event. Uh, so I was not shocked that when it was canceled, that was not surprising to me. This is not something that you can just kind of hope for. And I get tickets were almost selling out and things like that, but I don't think promotion, even when the event is, you know, sold out or whatever is a bad thing. People want to know what's going on. People want to know an event is happening. And I'm going to show up regardless whether it's canceled or not because I'm crazy, but not everyone has the free time that I do. Not This is not everyone's job the way it's mine. I can afford to lose 
a weekend to come to San Francisco to film an event or review an event, whether or not it's going to happen. Okay. A lot of people don't have that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with requesting the peace of mind that this event is happening by hearing the people putting it on, talking about it. Ugh, I don't know why I'm so difficult for me to talk. God. So I was told that because of the current state of tech, it's very hard to get sponsorships. As a creator, I can tell you right now, it's very hard to get sponsorships for a lot of people. And those people getting sponsorships, don't be surprised if creators start talking about how uh, sponsorships are going down. Um, that's not uncommon right now. I'm set up fine. I'm good. Uh, but a lot of creators are not. And as well as this is, again, a first year event, it's hard to get people pitched on a first year event to begin with because there's no proof of concept yet. You're just like, yeah, there's going to be makers, makers event, science creators come give us money yes please sure enough uh my understanding of how they did the youtube sponsorship because youtube did sponsor the creator party i believe specifically for open sauce was that they basically just planned the party and then said hi do you want to sponsor this that's my understanding i don't know I, that was not confirmed to me i heard about that from a few other people the party was nice um they gave us free beanies which is great because i give youtube flack all the time about how they don't give us the chance to buy stuff and then we only once in a while get free stuff, which is great. I would buy YouTube merch. If you gave it, if you made it look cool, I would get it. I should not be a YouTuber who owns Twitch sweatpants, okay? I just, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be one, okay? But you guys don't sell me sweatpants, so that's that. But I think that that's gonna be much easier going forward for uh, open sauce to be able to be like, hey, we're doing an egg drop. Here's what it looked like last year. Would you like to sponsor the egg drop and we can put your branding here, here, and here. I was told because I said like, oh yeah, the bags that you guys give out, that's a very easy branding spot because then a brand is happy because their brand is literally associated with the event for at least a year until the next brand is going on. And apparently there was someone who was going to do that and then they pulled out, I don't know. But again, you can show like, oh, look here's the photos of people picking up all their bags that's an easy pitch i think as well i think spe specifically pitching the uh certain events i think that'll be very helpful but also now that you're able to say like look at these creators you're going to have access to but not just that but this very niche down group of attendees people that are interested in science and maker spaces as well as well as like 3d printing equipment supplies tools things like that tech supplies soldering tools computer plates phone things i'm just listing random science shit at this point that'll be very much easier to pitch i think especially when you can't just pitch on look at these creators you'll have access to but look at these attendees that you'll have access to oh yeah the egg drop competition i mentioned that apparently and i have yet to find video of this if you find video of someone's the egg would have uh, said it looked like this okay here's the finished product of the chaos carrier from applicant swell the timing was a little off so i did not see the egg drop happen for my egg drop but i then afterwards went up and was like hey i'm assuming it broke but like how did swell the chaos carrier perform and they were like oh no it did good like it landed and then the egg rolled out but it was still intact what and i wasn't there to witness the genius of my physics capabilities my physics prowess what Please tell me someone's video of that. Um, if you do, you can send it to uh, x, well, entertainment, x at gmail.com. I am a physics genius and I just want that on the record now. Um, I am an egg drop champion, allegedly. I don't think that got me anything aside from bragging rights because uh, <laughs> I will not let that go. Something I did not like, which I get kind of why they started doing this for the poster bits and things like that because they did start auctioning off the uh, open source posters. They had a bunch of the creators sign them and things like that to sell at the end and start like kind of doing little fun giveaways and things like that. Aside from that, a few booths did start tearing down early before the end of the event. And I'm talking like before 3 p.m. They started tearing down when the event went till about six. I'm never a fan of that. I think that people paid for a full day. You should have the expo people pay for stay for a full day it was only a few booths but i just i'm never a fan of that a few people one person left full out i get if you sell out of your stuff and you're just like oh hey sold out whatever if you're selling something in an expo hall that's one thing but um these exhibits and things like that that these basically were i don't think breaking down is a good idea and i don't think that's out of line to be like hey you signed up to have a space for the full two days. You got to be here for the full two days. Some people have family emergencies, things like that. That's understandable. But there was a few booths that did this. And I just don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's a good move. Again, people paid for the full time. They should stay for the full time. That's just me. I'll be interested to see what happens next year. First year is one thing. And we're seeing this now with some other events as well. Second year is the real test. Can you do it again? 
Can you improve upon it? You guys are starting in the red for this year, which I think is probably better, honestly, because I don't want you getting overly cocky and thinking that that's your new baseline and all of that. So there's a lot that can go wrong with the second event, but also you know what went right with this event, you know what went wrong, so there's a lot of learning happening. So I'm hopeful for you guys for the future. Overall, I had a lot of fun at this event. Little tweaks, obviously, first time event, but you guys should be very proud of yourself with what you were able to pull off. Some seasoned events can do this. Something that happens every time I recognize an event by one of you, my viewers, you come up and you start doing an information download with me. Oh my God, let me tell you what happened. Here's the horrible thing that happened. Let me tell you about my experience. Experience. Let me tell you this. And it's a lot of negative things about the event, which is great. That's important. And I'm thankful for that. Obviously, that makes this channel run. But I do think that there was something to be said about the fact that everyone that came up to me this event was so excited to tell me about the things that they had seen. And have you seen this yet? You need to see this literally not a complaint aside from the food situation like and that was people being like yeah i did hear about people complaining about the food thing because you know it's hard to get up there and all of that and apparently the ship was supposed to come with a ramp and it said they had stairs but also for that space i'm not shocked that it was stairs because it's a tighter space a ramp would have to be longer because those were fairly steep stairs. But you guys should be very proud of yourself. This was a very well done event, especially for our first year. First year conventions are never easy to pull off. I think 5,000 was probably the best number you guys could have gone with. Anymore, I think it would have been a mess. And I think it was just enough people that this was a full space, but it was never too crowded. Did you go to Open Sauce? Did you hear about Open Sauce? Were you worried about it being canceled? Were you one of the people that emailed me? Were you there and you didn't see me? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Hands Podcast. Reminder that Swell Entertainment now has episodes going on Spotify. So the day after this episode is available, the episode will be available on Spotify if you would like to listen to it in podcast form. Reminder, I have merch, Physics Genius, I'm Mothmanda, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure something out for this. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting my Patreon, if you also support my Patreon, let us down below, da 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 Like to follow me on social media, that'll be all up here, and that's going to have a lovely day. Good night. I'm sorry. I'm still laughing about the whole like, yeah, we lost a lot of money for this event and then being preceded by I rented a battleship. <laughs> Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Allen, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, Ryan, Corey, Daniela, Dirty One, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eol, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Jay, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Leah, Lex, Louisa, Luis, May West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew S, Mimor, Medic, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathan, Hat, Pen, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Qwerty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Will, Wendy, William, Zendry, Zwing.